kindly rise for the angelus in name of the father son and the holy spirit amen the angel of the lord declared unto mary she is conceived by the power of the holy spirit hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen behold the hand made of the lord be done to me according to thy word hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us Hail Mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen pray for us holy mother of god that we may be made worthy of the promises of christ let us pray pour forth we beseech you o lord your grace into our hearts that as we have known the incarnation of christ your son by the message of your angel so by his passion and cross we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection to the same christ our lord amen May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. For the entrance, please take hymn number 76. Hymn number 76. friends every eucharistic celebration is an experience and some experiences can be special every celebration of the mass is special but today in a very special way we are going to celebrate this eucharist in the context of family life and especially in the context of the relationship between the husband and wife so during this mass we will be having some interactions I would like to begin with one question which I would like to put to Father Kingsley. Father Kingsley, we came with in procession, we sang the entrance hymn. Has the mass really begun? When does the mass begin? Father Erasto Fernandez has a book entitled Eucharist Step by Step. Yes, Father. And dear friends, both of us are going to explain the eucharist step by step as we celebrate this divine mystery to answer father robert's first question i would say the mass begins with the moment you think of going to the church for mass hence your journey from home to the church is a procession please create a sacred space for you and others pay attention to your words and actions on the way lest jesus ask you what are you discussing on the way
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. with your spirit. Every family is a domestic church. And the entire church is like a large family. And therefore, whatever takes place in the church has to also take place in the family. So what is happening in the church these days? That we are entering into a new liturgical year that is the season of Advent. And with this season of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent, we begin a new liturgical year. And this season of Advent is divided into two parts. The first part is from first Sunday of Advent to the 16th of December, where we prepare ourselves for the second coming of Jesus. The Greek word for the second coming is parousia, coming again. And from 17th to 24th of December, we commemorate the first coming of Jesus. That, is, that took place in Bethlehem. And then we celebrate Christmas. Between these two comings, the historical coming and the future coming, there is a third coming, that is the coming of Jesus every day. Father Robert, I have three questions. Why did you kiss the altar? Why did you make the sign of the cross? What is the meaning of and with your spirit? So, as we have begun, the Mass does not begin with just entrance hymn or the procession, but with the first thought that we get in order to go for, uh, uh, for the Mass. So as soon as the priest uh, comes here, he kisses the altar. Because this altar is not an ordinary place. It is a sacred place on which Jesus has come down so many times in the form of the bread and wine. His body and blood was made real. So this is kind of a consecrated place. So imagine, even if you get a small relic of a saint, you will preserve it for so many years. And this is not simply relic, this is a reality where we know Jesus has come down on the altar so many times. And therefore, the priest kisses the altar. Then the Eucharistic celebration begins with the sign of the cross and also ends with the blessing at the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Because the Trinitarian formula is central to our faith. That all of us are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All the Christian prayers will begin with the Holy Trinity. And we glorify the Holy Trinity at the end of that work and of the prayer. And Eucharist is the biggest kind of a prayer. The most important prayer. And therefore, it begins with the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, you just responded to the greeting also with your spirit, and, and with your spirit. This response will come five times during this entire liturgy. In the beginning now, at the time of gospel, then at the time of preface or offertory, then again at the time of peace, exchange of peace, and finally at the blessing. The priest or the deacon or the bishop will uh, greet you and then you will respond and with your spirit. What kind of a spirit is this? The people are reminding the priest of the spirit that he has received at his ordination. Whether he's a deacon, a priest or a bishop. But at the ordination we receive a particular spirit. It is not simply Holy Spirit but the spirit of ordination, the spirit of consecration. And therefore, it is not simply also with you, but with your spirit, pointing out to that reality which is existing there. So with this uh, little introduction, now let us uh, ask Father uh, Kingsley, now as we begin the penitential rite, Father Kingsley, what is the importance or role of this rite in the Mass? Why is it placed in the beginning of the Mass? Basically, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was for the purification of the human race from the stain of sin. Hence, the entire 
Eucharist have five places in which the faithful are purified. The penitential rite before the gospel, the reader, celebrant, consulbrant, and deacon is purified with this prayer. Lord, cleanse my lips and my heart that I may worthily proclaim your good news. Similarly, after the proclamation, he prays, May through the proclamation of the gospel, all our sins be wiped out. After the offertory, while washing his hands, the celebrant prays, Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. The exchange of peace is another expression of reconciliation before receiving communion. The sense of unworthiness is also expressed when we say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. While purifying the chalice, the priest says, What has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may be poses in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. In short, the penitential rite is part of the process of purification. Today we are going to have a special penitential rite for the couples present here. I invite you to think of moments in which you have offended each other. Let us pause and think. Now, turn to each other face to face. Face to face, are right? Turn to each other face, face to, to face. face. Okay. And ask for forgiveness or say, I forgive you now. So now I invite you to place your right hand on the head of your partner. The right hand, both of you, each one. Yes, exactly. And I'm going to say the prayer of absolution, asking the Lord to forgive us of all our sins. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. After this, we are supposed to sing the Gloria. When the Advent season, we don't sing Gloria. Father Robert, can you enlighten us about the Gloria? First of all, let me say that this Gloria in Excelsis Deo was sung by the angels at the birth of Jesus in the fields of Bethlehem. And ever since then, for the last 2,000 years, the church has been glorifying the Holy Trinity 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the Gloria. By Gloria, we are exalting God for all that the Lord has done for us. After the penitential rite, our hearts are lifted up with praise and thanksgiving. And therefore, we praise and thank God through this Gloria. Now, this Gloria has an implication. We are not simply glorifying God. We are also glorifying God for each other. And this is what we are going to do. So, I once again invite you to turn to each other. Just turn to each other. <coughs> and I'm going to give about 30 seconds to the men, husbands. Tell two good qualities to your wife. And then next 30 min uh, seconds, I will give it to the uh, wives. So let us begin with the husbands. Tell two good qualities to your wife. Come on, start. Don't feel shy. Don't be stingy. And now the wives can tell the husbands the good things that you are experiencing about them. Okay, so let us now continue. Let us pray. The celebrant pauses here. We are expected to make our prayers in silence. Then the celebrant collects all these prayers and says the opening prayer, which also known as collect. So now I invite you to make your prayers. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, we begin the liturgy of the word. St. Augustine says, during the Mass, we are fed on two tables, the table of the Word and the table of the Bread. The Word becomes flesh and dwells among us. The first reading is generally taken from the Old Testament. In the Easter season, it is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The responsorial psalm is from the Book of Psalms. The second reading is from the letters of St. Paul, Peter, John, James, and Jude, and from the book of Revelation. And the Alleluia is dismissed in the season of Lent. Just become aware of your bodily posture and gesture. For the first reading, Psalm, and the second reading, we sit at the feet of the Lord like Mary of Bethany. For the Alleluia and Acclamation and the Gospel, we stand. This is to river the Gospel and enjoys center place in the Bible, that enjoys center place in the Bible as well as in the liturgy of the Word. Observe the priest and yourselves, singing, signing with the cross on the forehead, the lips and chest, asking the Lord to enlighten our minds that we may understand his word, purify and strengthen our lips, that we may courageously proclaim it and open our hearts, that we may treasure the word and ponder upon it. See the priest creasing the book of the gospel. Once again, to affirm its primacy in the word of God. The homily the creed and the universal prayers is part of the liturgy of the word. The preacher breaks the word, we profess our faith, and then we pray for the needs of the world. For St. Ambrose of Milan says, when the word is proclaimed, we listen to God. But when we pray, 
we speak to God. So now let us participate in this liturgy of the word wholeheartedly. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it and many peoples shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O God of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We shall, we shall go, go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord. There where shall there were set the thrones for ju judgment, the thrones of the house of David. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We, we shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For the peace of Jerusalem pray. May they prosper those who love you. May peace abide in your walls and security in your towers. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For the sake of my family and friends, let me say, Peace upon you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek good things for you. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We shall go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, besides this you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. This night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. 
but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly rise. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But, na but know this that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be alert, be awake, for you do not know what hour the Son of Man is going to come. These words are sounding like warning. So what we are going to do is, we are going to reflect on a story first and three readings, but in an interactive way. So I'm going to begin with a story. We had one father, John DeMello, in the seminary, and he was a gold medalist in sociology. Today he is in Chicago in one of the renowned universities as a professor. And Father John DeMello uh, told us this story. He said a man came from US carrying a machine saying that if a blind man gets this machine and he's operated, he can see. So let us find a worthy person, a deserving person, a deserving candidate for this machine. So both of them went to the ho home for the blind, and there were about 200 blind people there. And they started interviewing these blind people just to find out the deserving candidate. So the first person was asked, if you get this machine, if you're operated, you get your sight back, what will you do? And this man said, I know Indians are mad after cricket, but we are very unfortunate. We cannot see cricket match. If I get my sight back, I will start enjoying cricket matches. Then the second one, if I get my sight back, I will read a lot of books and gain a lot of knowledge. The third person, if I get my sight back, I will go around sightseeing all over India and the whole world and enjoy myself. 
but the fourth person was the really deserving candidate. This is what he said. If I get my sight back, I will stay here in this house of the blind and I will serve all these people. Because I know what their pain is. I know what is darkness. I know what is blindness. I have experienced myself. I'm experiencing. So if I get my sight, I'm going to use this sight for these blind people. Now just turn to each other and just try to draw a lesson for yourself. I'm giving you just 30 minutes and talk to one another as to what lesson are you drawing from this story. Come on, talk to each other. Talk to each other. Okay. Anybody would like to tell us what lesson did you draw? From your place where you are sitting, you can also say. Anybody from here, from here? One or two persons, because we have very little time to proceed. So anybody, what lesson do you draw from this story that you have just heard? Anybody? Come on, quick. This is our parish? Yes, brother. So we should not be selfish. Very good message, very good. Anybody? Yes. Wow, wonderful, wonderful message. Both the messages are so powerful. We should not be selfish and we should enlighten others when we are enlightened. Anybody else wants to try before I proceed with the next one? Anybody? Okay, we proceed to the next. Okay, did you hear the first reading uh, carefully? From which book is this first reading taken? From the book of Isaiah. Now, you know, Isaiah has 66 chapters. And not all the chapters are written in the sequence. They have their own kind of timings, different timings. So the first 39 uh, 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 chapters are written in a particular context from which today's reading has come. The second, 42, 55, these uh, chapters are written in another context. And 56 to 66, another context. So the context of the first part is there was war around. Lot of people were fighting wars. Lot of nations were against each other. And Jerusalem also was thinking that we should wage war against the nations so that they don't trouble us anymore. And Isaiah comes this, with this message. He says, the word of the Lord will go from Jerusalem and the law of the Lord from Zion. And the very word Jerusalem, Ir Shalaim, means city of peace. So if you are the city of peace, you cannot think of violence. So this is an invitation to move from the thoughts of violence to the thoughts of peace. That is what we are learning from the first uh, reading. Now a small question for you, just to reflect. We need not share, we need not kind of come up and uh, share with us. Is there violence in the family? Apparently we think there is no violence. We are not really dashing against each other. We are not taking swords in our hands. We are not taking uh, pickaxes and just hurt one another. We don't do that. But what about our words? What about our behaviors? Sometimes what about our looks, angry words, angry actions, just, just banging the table suddenly and uh, making a lot of noise. This is all violence. So just reflect about this, that this is the message the Lord wants to give each one of us, that there is some sort of violence in the family. Sometimes the violence may not be external, it is internal. The wife is suffering so much, she is actually very... A boiling with anger but she cannot express because in-laws or whatever pressures are there. Just think about this and ask yourself, am I a person of peace? Am I bringing peace in my family or am I putting fuel in the fire of violence? This is the message from the uh, second, uh, first reading. Let us come to the second reading and from where we have to pick up something for you. 
And there, the imagery is used of darkness and light. That there are works of darkness and there are works of light. And for Paul, darkness stands for sinful lifestyle. All pleasures of the world, pleasures of the body, selfishness, conceit, fight, anger, pride, all these are works of darkness. And works of light, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, self-control, all these are works of light. So the invitation is to move from the works of darkness to the works of light. So I will not invite you to really share with us, but just turn to one another and just share as to which are the works of darkness in my family and which are the works of light in my family. Appreciate each other for the works of light. First we begin with that part and in the second part you can also talk about this is the area where there is a darkness in our family. Take about one minute to talk to each other. Come on, start. The works of darkness, the works of light in your family. Talk. Talk about it. And now we come to the gospel. And I'm sure you must have noticed something in the gospel, something very different from all the other gospels. This gospel has four images. And the first image is taken from uh, Genesis. That is the time of Noah. That in the time of Noah, people were eating and drinking, getting married, and were given in marriage. That is what we are told. And suddenly the flood came, the deluge. This is what can happen in our family. That we may not be preparing for something which may suddenly come upon us. Look at the coronavirus. We were not prepared. Suddenly it attacked the whole world and swept the whole world. So let us ask ourselves, am I ready for such surprises in my life? Sometimes good, sometimes bad. So this is the first insight from the gospel. Am I ready and prepared for the surprises? This is in context of the Lord's coming. Let us not take it for granted that our life is going to go for many years. Look at our so many companions who went away during the time of uh, pandemic. One of our priests was celebrating the silver jubilee mass of his ordination and on the altar he got a heart attack and died. Can you imagine? The party was organized. It It turned out to be a funeral ceremony. That means let us not take this for granted, that I'm going to be living automatically, everything will go on without any problem. No! We have to prepare ourselves and be alert and be ready. This is the first uh, image. The second and the third image are more or less similar. Two people will be in the field, men. One man will be taken up, other one will be left behind. Two women will be grinding at the millstone and one will be left and the other one will be taken up. What is the meaning of this? That in the world, the good and the bad are going to be together. Only the point that we have to make sure is am I marching towards good or am I marching towards bad all the time? Just as St. Augustine tells us, St. Augustine says that we are a combination of holiness and sinfulness. That is not a problem. The problem is, are we moving from sinfulness to holiness or from holiness to sinfulness? The journey we have to be very, very sure. And the last one is about a thief. That no thief will be telling you that I'm going to attack your family tonight. I'm going to steal your cupboard tonight. No. The thief will come unannounced. Similarly, the Lord will come in our life unannounced. All that we have to be is to be alert, to be awake, for we do not know the hour when the Son of Man is going to come. Let us pause for a few seconds in silence. I invite you to close your eyes. 
and try to recall at least one insight from the sharing that we have done just now, that this is what I will carry home. Gently open your eyes and please stand. We are going to profess our faith in the Lord by reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And, and he rose, rose again on the third day, day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. Let our response be, Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Felix Machado, bishops, priests, and the religious, that they may be strengthened by the grace and love of the Holy Spirit to spread the gospel as we celebrate the Lord's second coming. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. We are reminded by Jesus in today's gospel that we should always be awake, for we never know when our loving Father will call us to him. We pray, Lord, Lord that in our busy lives we always remain alert and be prepared to listen to your voice and carry out your holy will. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Let us pray for the world, that all of God's children might choose peaceful ways to solve their disagreements and differences, wherever they may be. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Let us pray for all people who suffer without hope in our world, that they may find hearts and hands reaching out to them with love and encouragement in their struggles. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Let us pray for all who are hungry for food, longing for a family or a home in our world, that God might provide them their needs through the generosity of all his children. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Let us pray for our parish community and families that they might grow together in faith, hope, and in Christ's love, 
during the season of holy waiting. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let us place our personal petitions in the hands of our Prince of Peace. For this we pray to our Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayers. Our Father, we lift up to you each and every couple gathered here and all the other couples who are at home, that all of them may experience your deep, intimate love and friendship. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Now we are entering the liturgy of the Eucharist. This part has three sections, the offertory, the Eucharistic prayer, and the communion rite. Father Robert, can you tell us something about the Eucharistic prayer? So the Eucharistic prayer that is going to begin now has eight different parts. There is a preface, there is a sanctus, there is a prayer of consecration, there is a mystery of faith, the commemoration of the living and the dead and the saints, and finally the doxology. And this entire thing will now be, uh, begin with uh, offertory. So we have now offertory procession. And if you observe that in the offertory procession, we bring various things. But this has to be climaxed by the bread and wine. We cannot bring the book of the gospel of, or the Bible or the cross for offertory because they are already here. The cross is always here. The Bible is already here. The word of God is already here. So we don't bring these things in the offertory. But all the other symbols we can bring in order to symbolize that we are offering our lives to uh, God. Now when we see that uh, the priest will receive the bread and wine, and then uh, in the wine he will try to put a few drops of water. What is the symbolism? That the wine stands for the divinity of Jesus. And the uh, uh, water will stand for his humanity. That he join our humanity now we by the mystery of the water are joining his divinity this kind of an exchange takes place not only in the eucharistic celebration but also in the uh, life of the husband and wife that all of us are not perfect human beings something will be lacking in one but the other one will be having something extra so we share with each other we try to kind of complete each other we become complementary personalities and we try to complete each other by helping out one another. And that is how the divinity in us and the humanity in the other come together. And that is the fullness of Jesus Christ. That is what we see. Now the priest will say, my uh, uh, sacrifice and your sacrifice. Why these two different words? It could have been one, our sacrifice. No, the priest at this juncture will be at a different level, uh, offering himself, offering the entire church. And all of us also will be offering ourselves at a different level. And therefore, these words you will uh, hear as the minister will recite the prayer. So let us now bring our offerings and the offertory hymn can be sung. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God. 
Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your good this wine we offer fruit of the vine work of our hands it will become the cup of joy blessed be God blessed be God blessed be God forever amen Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my and your sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord have set the sacrifice in your hands and the praise and glory of his name forever and ever for all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Kingsley, tell us something about the preface that we are going to begin now. There are more than 50 different prefaces to be recited on various occasions, such as Sundays, big days of the ordinary season, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Holy Week, Easter, Holy Spirit, Mary, Saints, Martyrs, Apostles, Pastors, Matrimony, Death, etc. The preface is the first part of the Eucharistic prayer. Hence, the faithful are invited to lift up their hearts and to give thanks and praise to God. All prefaces end with an appeal to the faithful to join the choirs of in heaven by singing the Santos. Holy. The words of the Santos are taken from Isaiah chapter 6 and Psalm chapter 118. With that we enter into the heavenly liturgy. Now I invite you to devoutly participate in the preface and the santos. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of all. Blessed is he who comes. 
comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is the Lord. Now comes the highest point of the Holy Eucharist namely the consecration father robert tell us how does the church indicate that consecration is the highest moment of the mass here we make three important observations the first important observation is the words of the consecration are recited very devoutly and prayerfully because this is a very important moment and therefore we kneel at this moment those who cannot kneel have to at least stand. The church bells are rung, the small bells on the altar also are rung. That means something very, very significant, important is happening at this moment. The second observation that we make is that the narration of the institution that Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it, all this, this happens to be in the past, as, as if it is in the past uh, tense. But the words when Jesus says, take and eat, for this is my body, these words are not in the past, they are in the present. That means we are not simply commemorating a past event here. We are actually experiencing something that is happening here and now, right now. Now this has an implication in our family, that certain events have taken place long back, but they are still having some significance and some influence and effect on our life even today, as if they are happening just now. So we have to find out such events in our life and make sure that they either help us or we are healed with the uh, past hurts that we may be experiencing. The third observation is when we are invoking the Holy Spirit, the symbolism of dew is used. Now these days you may be experiencing dew fall around us. We don't see dew, but we can feel the effect. So we don't see the Holy Spirit, but we can see the effect. And what is the effect? The bread getting uh, transformed into body and the wine getting transformed into body, the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is an important event that is going to take place now. Let us bring our ordinary bodies to the Lord that he may give us his consecrated body and become one with us. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Father Kingsley, we have already prayed for various intentions when we were saying the prayers of the faithful. Why does the church now pray for the Pope, the Bishop, the priest, the dead, etc.? 
the prayer that we are going to offer God is an expression of the article of faith. Communion of saints. According to this article, the church lives at three levels. The militant church, the suffering church, and the triumphant church. The militant church includes the Holy Father as the head of the universal church, the bishop as the local ordinary, and the priests. The suffering church includes the dead, especially those in the purgatory. The church offers special prayers for the dead during the funeral mass. The triumphant church includes prayers with Mary and the saints. The saint of the day or the patron saint is mentioned on important occasions. The Eucharistic prayer is concluding with the doxology. Here, the most holy trinity is glorified in a solemn way. In the offertory, the priest had offered the bread and wine separately as a gift. Now, he elevates them together because now they are body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Amen at the end of the doxology is solemn and loud. Let us pray for the church and glorify the Holy Trinity. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Felix our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. Father Robert, now we have come to the communion rite. Please enlighten <coughs> us about its importance in the Mass. So this is an important moment in the Mass. All that we have been doing so far is to meet our Lord Jesus Christ personally. So in three stages we have already met him. The first stage was word. The second stage was gift. Now the third way will be his body. Doesn't this happen in the family life? That you fail in love with each other by expressing your love in words. Later on, you expressed your words, uh, your ex uh, love in the form of gifts. And finally, you gave your bodies to each other. This is exactly what is going to happen now. And therefore, this communion rite will have the part of the prayers addressed to Jesus Christ. So far, we were addressing all the prayers to Father. After the Our Father, all the other prayers will be addressed to Jesus Christ. And then we will also have the exchanging of peace so that we are purified within to receive Jesus in our hearts and become one. We no longer remain two, but we shall become one in this communion rite. So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And, and lead, lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from all that is evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So once again, turn to each other. Hold the hands of each other, both the hands, tightly. And through that tight hands, express that peace of the Lord by saying, peace be with you. Lamb of God, take away take the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. some pain and some tears but you pulled me through I waited so long but I see you belong deep down in my heart and I wonder why I didn't love you from the start
Lord has come into our hearts. Let us pause for a few seconds in silence. And I invite the wives to thank the Lord for the gift of their husbands and husbands to thank the Lord for their wives. Just spend a few moments in thanking the Lord for each other. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For now, even as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Announcements, first Sunday of the Advent. This Sunday's free meal for the poor was served by the first Holy Communion Street Boy. All our children should attend Sunday school weekly catechism classes followed by Sunday Mass at 9.30 a.m. in the church. Parents are requested to send their children for the catechism classes. Last Sunday, we celebrated the solemnity of the Universal King, Christ the King. Thanks to all of you and all our volunteers for your participation in the adoration and prayer. It was a spirit-filled day. This Friday is the first Friday. There will be adoration to bless the sacrament at 6.30 a.m. and 7 a.m. followed by the Holy Mass, same 7, 6 a.m. followed by the Holy Mass at DP Nagar. There will be a meeting of all the members of church association as well as all volunteers for Pali Festa on Wednesday after the evening Mass in the church. On the occasion of our church feast Pali Festa, we are publishing our parish bulletin, Vatsalya. In this bulletin, we will be discussing two topics. First, family religious life in post-pandemic times and second, migration of young people. To discuss these topics, we are going to interview two families from each zone. The parish council members may approach you, kindly cooperate with them. If you wish to give interview, please contact parish council members. Due to GST tax system, we cannot collect funds through advertisements for Watson Lair. However, we have to bear the printing expenses of Watson Lair. Dear friends, you all are very supportive and out of your generosity, you always financially support our parish. We are grateful and so we are able to spend money for faith formation and maintenance of our church buildings. Every year for our church feast, we give an envelope to every family. Cluster leaders will come. Voluntary, you may fill it and return through them. Our family cell, our youth group has organized Christmas Samaka for singing and dance competitions. To take part in it, please fill a form with parish council members 
and submitted by 1st December 2022. We are replacing our old fans in the church and installing new fans so that we can save electricity as well as our church electric bill. You may donate one fan. Those who would like to put up a stall in our Pali Festa, please register in office and be present on Thursday, 14th of November at 10 a.m. in the church. Dear friends, rainy season is over. We have cleaned our ground in front of the school. So on Sundays, please park your vehicles there in the ground and do not park in the church campus. Feast during the week, Wednesday, St. Andrew the Apostle, Saturday, St. Francis Xavier. The new Marathi missile, revised missile, is already ready and is in use from today, the first Sunday of Advent that is 27th of November. Those who attend Marathi Mass need to learn the changes made in the missile, especially the responses and prayers. We are placing Mass cards in pews. Last Sunday's collection rupees 82,703. Wednesday's collection rupees 88,833. St. Vincent de Paul collection rupees 35,071. Bethel Prayer Group Collection Rupees 600, English Prayer Group Collection Rupees 1173, Adoration of the Christ the King Rupees 25,492. After Mass, we have snacks and the coffee outside the, our porch. Please do have the snacks. We, have, we thank you for your generosity and wish you a prayerful week ahead. Please stand for the Prayer for the Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to perceive it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Now we come to the end of the Eucharistic celebration. The priest gives the blessings to the congregation and sends them on the mission of the loving and serving the Lord and one another. The recession hymn is meant to accompany the celebrant in the procession from the altar to the sacristy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the Almighty God and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ his advent and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Dear friends, I take this opportunity to congratulate our parish priest, Father Raymond Rumau and Father Kingsley for taking this initiative and organizing Mass for the Couples. This is the second time that we are having a Mass for the Couples in this parish. The first time it was in uh, for the Marathi-speaking uh, couples and today we are having it for you all. And I'm really delighted as a director of the Diocesan Family Commission to uh, announce that this is the first parish where we have tried this kind of an experience, experiment. Please give us your feedback so that we may carry on 
this experiment also in other parishes and enlighten the families to participate in the Eucharist lively. On behalf of our parish priest, Father Raymond and other priests, I take the opportunity to thank you. Thank Father Robert for coming here and enlightening us for this uh, wonderful Eucharistic celebration. Father, thank you so much. And I also thank all the couples who have come here, uh, who are invited. So thank you so much for coming here and joining with this Eucharistic celebration where you, you may experience the Lord Jesus Christ. Take this uh, Jesus in your heart and spread it to the community. So uh, we will have more couples next time. Small announcement, there will be coffee and snacks served outside after the Mass. For a recessional hymn, take him, please take hymn number 249, hymn number 249. Together in one love and faith, seeking ever to be true. You will guide us on the path, O Lord, of eternal peace. With our joys and with our cares, to the world we all must go. Weighed by toil, but raised by hope, to the world we go all together in one love and faith seeking ever to be true you will guide us on the path o lord of eternal 